How do Hebbian synapses actually work? Hebbian synapses are ones which, when the presynaptic and the postsynaptic cells are both firing at a high rate, a synapse is strengthened. One way in which they can work is through a well-described process called long-term potentiation. I'm going to be focusing on one particular kind of long-term potentiation, which is, if you like, the, the canonical version of it. So let's imagine that we've got a presynaptic neuron. Here's the synapse. And we have a postsynaptic cell like this. All right, so this is presynaptic and this is postsynaptic. An action potential comes here and then eventually goes out through there. We have neurotransmitter in here being released upon excitation and we have here neurotransmitter receptors which are opening in response to this neurotransmitter binding and allowing positive charge to enter and that causes the depolarization. So then an action potential here results in an excitatory postsynaptic potential there. The question is, how can we, or how does the neuron, make this to be bigger, conditioned upon simultaneous presynaptic and postsynaptic firing? Well, the answer is in the kind of receptors that we've got. We're going to focus on a neurotransmitter receptor subtype called glutamate receptors. These are receptors which respond to the neurotransmitter glutamate, glutamic acid. There are two main types of glutamate receptors. There are ionotropic and metabotropic. Amongst the ionotropic receptors, there are different types, including NMDA receptors, N-methyl diaspartic acid, and there are other types, but this isn't the main subject, so I'm just going to limit this to AMPA receptors. So these are both ligand-gated ion channels, which respond to glutamate by opening or closing. So by, they respond to glutamate by opening, of course. Now, here's the point to remember, is that NMDA receptors are calcium permeable, and these are not calcium permeable. So let's see what happens if we have an action potential arrive here and no concomitant depolarization here. So this this silent this neuron here is silent. There's no other depolarization going on. We just got presynaptic only. Right, so let's clear Let's clear some of these things here. And so we've got an action potential here, but not here. So what's going to happen? Glutamate is released. We have two types of receptor. We have NMDA receptors and we have AMPA receptors. Before the action potential arises, before any neurotransmitter is released, of course, 
These are all closed. Glutamate is released. Glutamate binds to both the NMDA receptors and the AMPA receptors. And the gate opens. Let's look at AMPA receptors first. So this gate now opens. And we have entry of positive ions. And so we get an EPSP. The same happens for NMDA receptors, but there's a problem. There's a magnesium ion stuck inside the NMDA receptor. So although the gate is actually open, no current can pass through. So only half of the receptors, if you like, are activated. And then, of course, once the glutamate is dispersed and taken up, we then return. So we get a small EPSP. Now, how can we get rid of this magnesium ion here? The answer is depolarization. If you depolarize this postsynaptic cell, so this now becomes less negative, what happens is that pushes the magnesium ion out. Right, so let's just go through that again. What we're going to do now is we're going to artificially depolarize this cell. And what that's going to do is it's going to move this magnesium ion out. So now, when the glutamate arrives, it can get the ion, positive ions can get in, and so we've now got a bigger depolarization. So what that means is, is these NMDA receptors will only be activated when the postsynaptic cell is depolarized. In other words, it's active. And of course, it also stands to reason that they'll only get activated when there's glutamate being released by the presynaptic cell. So they require the presynaptic cell to have an action potential. And can you see what's happened here? We've now actually got the conditions for a Hebbian synapse. Now, another thing you might go back and remember that we pointed out that these cells, the, these, these um, NMDA receptors are permeable to calcium. So what we've got so far is a Hebbian synapse almost, but it forgets as soon as the depolarization is over. How can we actually change that? Well, this is where the calcium comes in. Because this is calcium permeable, calcium now enters the cell as well, and then calcium can do all sorts of things. It can affect the genome, to cause more AMPA receptors to be made and put into the membrane, or it can alter the AMPA receptors to be more sensitive. And both of these outlast this EPSP. So what do we see? Well, This is what you see. If you give the presynaptic cell a chain of spikes, the postsynaptic cell will have individual EPSPs of the same size. If you now, before that, 
So if you now give this one a burst of activity, so it's firing away, while the presynaptic cell is active as well, what happens now you find is now when you go back to normal firing, the EPSPs here have got bigger. So they've been potentiated. This is potentiation and it's long term because it can last for seconds, minutes or even longer. So now we've got a genuinely Hebbian synapse because the potentiation is long term and we've got a system whereby if we have simultaneous coexcitation of the two cells we end up with a stronger connection between them.